Instructomania presents the geography of Central America and the Mayan Empire. This video will detail Section 1 The geographical features of Central America. Section 2 How geography shaped the lives of the Mayans. And Section 3 Who lived in the Mayan Empire? The word geography, through a historian's lens, means the physical environment and how it may influence an economy and culture. Some examples may include scorching deserts that encourage nomads to move between water sources, islands where the surrounding ocean offered a food source, flooding rivers that created fertile farmland, and mountains where a resource like timber was used for building. Section 1 the geographical features of Central America. During the Renaissance of Europe and Asia, the Americas were finally discovered by explorers eager to gain wealth and learn about the tribes there. Before then, the native people had been left alone for thousands of years. Let's look at the geography of Mexico and then more specifically where the Maya lived in Central America. Mexico borders the United States at the Rio Grande. To the west sits a narrow peninsula called Baja California, and to its east is the Gulf of California. The Sierra Madre Occidental Mountains form a western ridge in northern mainland Mexico. The Sierra Madre Oriental Mountains are to the east, and the central plateau of Mexico is sandwiched between them. To the south is the Sierra Madre del Sur Mountains. The earliest known civilization, the Maya, lived on the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. It had both highland plateaus and deep valleys covered in jungle. The Maya civilization expanded beyond the peninsula to modern-day Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. In total, it measured 125,000 square miles. This meant that their territory actually reached the west coast of Central America and the Pacific Ocean. The Yucatan Peninsula is surrounded by ocean, the Gulf of Mexico to the northwest, and the Caribbean Sea to the southeast. A ridge of highlands run close to the west coast of Guatemala, developed by volcano Tahumulco, which rises to an elevation of 13,816 feet which makes it the highest peak in Central America. A major Mayan city was Palenque, situated between the highlands and lowlands of Yucatan. This location made it a prime place for trade. Fun fact, Palenque held the nickname Red City because the Mayans painted its buildings red with the seeds of the Achiote pod. The largest Mayan city in the lowland forest of the Yucatan Peninsula was Tikal in northern Guatemala. It eventually became the Mayan capital with a population of over 100,000 people. Other major cities sat in the lowlands of Belize, northwest of modern Belize City. These are now called Lamanai and Chunantanich Reserves and are open to tourists. Test your knowledge. Let's play Chase the Jaguar. In this game, you will track the Mayan revered jaguar as it appears on a blank map of Central America. Once the music stops, you will use a map labeled with physical features to determine where the jaguar ended up. Other animals may appear on the map, so don't forget to keep your eyes on the jaguar. <coughs> So, where did the jaguar end up? Was it the Gulf of Mexico, the Yucatan Peninsula, or the city of Palenque? That's right, it was the Gulf of Mexico. Let's try it again. Remember to keep your eyes on the jaguar. So where did the jaguar end up? Was it the Caribbean Sea, the city of Tikal, or the modern country of Honduras? It was the Caribbean Sea. 
Let's try one last time. You got this. So, where did the Jaguar end up? Was it the modern city of Guatemala, the Yucatan Peninsula, or the Pacific Ocean? Nice job! It was the Yucatan Peninsula. How did geography shape the lives of the Maya? Small farming villages eventually became cities. Some cities had great palaces. The Maya built flat-topped pyramids made of limestone on the highlands. As Maya cities grew, farmers needed to produce more food and cotton for clothing. They found ways to farm places they had not farmed before. They farmed the sides of hills by carving them into flat terraces. They built raised fields in the wet lowlands. They burned trees and plants in forests to clear the land for farming. The Maya moved good soil to areas that had poor soil and built up swampy regions. They dug irrigation systems to bring water to dry areas. The Maya traded food between the highland and lowland people and with other people in Central America and Mexico. In return, they received goods that they couldn't produce themselves, such as jade, feathers, and cacao beans. Cacao beans and obsidian, a glass-like volcanic rock, both held great value and were used as currency in trading deals. Obsidian was used to create sharp tips on arrows. Fun fact, the three main crops of the Maya, corn, beans, and squash, also sustained Native American tribes in North America. When grown together, they were called the Three Sisters. Section 3. Who lived in the Maya Empire? The Maya had a simplified social class structure consisting of an upper class and a lower class. The leader of a city or village was the priest king. He performed religious ceremonies and blood sacrifices to make the gods happy. In addition, he settled disputes and took offerings to the palace temple where he and his family lived. A well-known Mayan king was Pakal, who often gave his royal blood to please the gods. Astonishingly, the king would puncture his genitals, releasing his blood on paper. The paper would be burned in hope that the smoke would reach and please the gods. Warriors and famous winning athletes of the game Pakalpak enjoyed being wealthy and respected in their communities. Both slaves and farmers received treatment as lower-class citizens in Maya society. They also did the majority of trading between Maya cities and villages. Fun fact, an estimated 7 million Maya still live in Central America, maintaining their language and certain elements of their culture. Let's check out what it really looks like in Mexico. As you can see, the physical environment of Central America greatly influenced the economy and culture of the people that lived there. Consider this. In what ways does the physical environment influence your community? Be prepared to support your answers with examples. From two teachers to all of you amazing teachers out there, we would like to thank you for choosing our resources to use in your classroom. Find more Instructomania teaching materials and lessons at our Instructomania store and on our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for your support.